Well, hi. Good morning. Thanks for joining me in my uh, shop here. I'm a little bit upset this morning, so I'll try my best to not let it influence my video here, which is becoming extremely difficult to do. Okay, what are we doing? Um, what are we doing? Look, here's the transformer for this radio. This transformer shot. Here's the replacement transformer, which is on its way here now. It's made by uh, Hammond Manufacturing here in Waterloo. Okay, that costs about a hundred Canadian bucks to get that. I actually ordered it from a supplier in the States. Isn't that something? Okay, um, <clears throat> so, but I'd really like to continue with this radio, even with the transformer missing, and I have the opportunity to do it because I have a power supply up here which can supply the power that the radio needs without its own power supply. So one of the tricks in doing this is getting the B plus from the power supply I just showed you to flow into the radio through the field coil in the speaker here. If I arrange this so there's no current in the field coil then the speaker will have no magnetism and we won't hear anything coming from it. So that's one little thing I have to uh, make sure I get right. My supply also has a 6.3 volt output, so it can run the heaters in these tubes. And of course, we won't have the rectifier tube in. Uh, there's no need for it. Um, so that, that's kind of what I want to try to pull off. Make this radio work. If I can get it to, to, to work on the shop supply, then I can carry on with all the repair work. And by the time the new transformer comes, the radio will be ready ready for it. I mean, who wants to get a brand new transformer, a beauty, a beauty like that, and stick it into the radio, and the first thing it feels is a bunch of tired old parts. Ah, that sounds like a sad thing. Really big disappointment for the transformer. We don't want that to happen. So the name of the game is making two kinds of connections into the radio. One is the 6.3 volt connection uh, that's going to supply the heaters. That should be pretty easy to figure out. I can pretty much feed it into any tube, heater pins, and it will spread through the radio into the other other uh, other tubes. The rectifier tube has its own filament winding. It's actually a different voltage anyway. It's a five volt tube. It has its own filament winding, which of course is missing because the transformer is gone. We don't have to even think about that tube in terms of the uh, six point three volts. Okay, um, now that. <laughs> this is as light as a feather. Well, maybe not a feather, but it certainly is a lot lighter with that big honking transformer out of there. A piece of asbestos here. Now, let's start with the heater. I'll get, a lead. I'll get some leads here. <coughs> Excuse me from somewhere here. Now, one of the things about this is, uh, you know, I, I use these leads a lot. They're lousy. These are cheap, cheap leads. One set I've soldered, but the rest are not soldered. That's the soldered one. Good. When I'm using these for doing uh, voltage tests and things like that, and they're hooked up to meters and instruments, uh, you know, the fact that the lead might have some resistance doesn't mean much, but I'm going to use it now to convey current, maybe as much as an amp, You can see I've never used this uh, this terminal. That's the terminal for the uh, uh, 6.3 volts. This this doesn't match these, so this shouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, I get two points for that catch. I would, that was great. <laughs> I just get this right off of here. The whole thing moved. Ah. Ah, ah. Okay, so I've never used that. Does that really produce 6.3 volts? Hmm. Let's find out.
before I, I get all excited about something that's not going to work. Actually, if you get excited about something that's not going to work, you're having a good time until you know it doesn't work. So go ahead, get excited. <laughs> Enjoy your false pleasures. Why not? 6.3 volts AC is what we're looking for. All over now. Six point seven. So we put a little load on there; it'll come down right into the six point three range. So it's definitely there, even with that terminal kind of messed up. Now, how am I going to do this with that terminal like that? There's a hole through there, but it's way too small. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to sort something out here. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a uh, heavy uh, clip lead, or, and and this will be the uh, the other side of that supply. I'm just thinking that <clears throat> my power supply up here has some internal grounding and common leads in here. I have to be a little bit thoughtful about how I hook up these things. That's what I believe. So um, so this this one is connected to the common bus. So I want this to be connected to the side of the heater circuit that's also connected to the chassis. Which I'm, I can probably figure this out pretty quick here. Um, just, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna back up just a touch. I gotta put the tubes back in. I'm gonna put them in and get them in the right place. Then I'll know which tube goes where. Because right now they're all out. And I don't know which tube is where. And then I'll be able to figure out where the heater pins are on one of those tubes. And then we'll make the connection there. Okay. After a little bit of difficulty, I managed to make a connection. I am pretty sure is properly into the heater circuit inside the radio. We have four tubes we're gonna power up. They're all in parallel. Each one's going to draw about a quarter of an amp, maybe a third of an amp. You put the four together, we're going to pull about an amp into here. The problem I have now is if, I, if I've set this up wrong, uh, how do I know, number one, before I end up doing something bad? Now, nothing too bad should happen. It's just six volts on the end of this wire. That's not a lot. But I just like to be a little more certain. So I think what I can do is, and, and the power supply I'm about to use, this one here, is basically on and off. I can't control the 6.3, but I have another power supply I can control the 6.3 on, the uh, voltage on it. That's one of these two guys here. So I'm first I'm going to hook this up here. Yes, it's, even though it's DC, it shouldn't make any difference. And what I can do is I can slowly turn up the voltage see that there's current flowing, see how much current is flowing and make, you know, see if it's all making sense or not before I, uh, before I, I go all the way and blow what's left of this radio up. Okay, so controls are down. Okay, so we're reading voltage here. So I'll turn it up. If it, if it goes up nicely, it can't be drawing too much current. Going up nicely. Nope. I went up to there and stopped. So that means it's drawing its maximum current. Yeah, can you see that on the camera? You can kind of see the meter swinging right over. So it's already trying to draw more than 500 milliamps. But if I turn this up a little bit, okay, there I can send in, let's say, let's send in 400 milliamps. And is that enough to make a tube light? Wow, I don't know about that. Um, so all 
all the tubes are in the can metal cans except for this one. Let's see if I can see it heating. I'm just looking for that extra positive assurance that I've got things working right here. see any hint of heating there. I have another power supply. I have another power supply. Its minimum output is also 6 volts DC. So no use no use trying that, but it will put out 30 amps. But uh, we can't we can't try it because if we're just gonna end up right in the same spot, all the voltage there. Of course I can read the current with that read the current with that particular supply. Let's try that. You know, I'm being very cautious here on account of I've never actually done this before. This exact thing is as, as fairly simple as it all seems. Any of these tubes get any heat in them? Not that I can feel. Okay, and we're going to go up here. Voltage setting is minimal, so as soon as I turn that on, it's going to stick out six. Stick out. It's going to shove out six volts. The meter you can see here is the current meter. Uh, it's 30 amps full scale, so 10 is about the middle, the way it's arranged. So I'm thinking there's going to be one, one amp, one amp. Turn this on. This can only put out six volts. Can't go any higher. The worst thing that can happen is we warm up some tubes here. I don't think anything bad can happen. Let me turn down the big light here. Okay, so I guess I should have my eye on that ammeter when I flip this on. It makes a funny sound too, by the way. It makes a thong sound. Here we go. Okay, so that was a declaration of uh, overload, I think. What the heck was that? <laughs> yeah. Things are going downhill rapidly here. Let, let me just pull one lead off. So it's putting out six volts now. Why, 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 why? Why would it complain so much? Has a light called protection. Let's try this. Hey, didn't complain that time. Current flow is about a half an amp on the meter. Half an amp's going into something. Oh, I see the tube lighting up. Okay, that's that's proof positive. We're done on this. Okay, I managed to find some excellent clip leads. For this purpose, I've got it connected up to the heaters, connected up to the power supply up yonder. I am now going to test just the heater circuit here and make sure I've got this right. Okay, I get to watch this tube. Lights out, please. Can we have the lights down, please? Yes, we can. Okay, power on. Let's see if this tube heats up here. Come on, baby. Ah, so I don't see anything. Don't see anything. So the, uh, the supply is on standby right now. How much I want to bet? I have to switch it on to make it actually heat this tube. So I'll try that. There we go. Flipping over. Well, you know what? There's nothing happening here. So we're going to go off. What? Is all that testing led to nothing. All that preparatory testing got us nowhere. What did I do? So uh, let's put a voltmeter on this guy. 
see what's really showing up down here. Are you ready? This is the supply on standby. AC, 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 Jim, come on. There it is. It's right there. So we know the voltage is supplied when it's on standby. And it's all there, 6.7. I thought that would be pulled down by the load on the tubes. Is there any current flowing in there? on my supply that tells me there's current in here. Okay, so we want to go to 2 amps AC. Here we are. So it's showing uh, 40 milliamps. So the tubes in there, oh, you know what? Yeah, 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 never mind. Hey, hello, hello? <laughs> that's not, that's not at all correct. Each tube is drawing about a quarter of an amp. So this is this is the, so what did I do here? What have I done here? Uh, bad lead. Let's try that first. Bad lead. This is doing nothing now. Don't pay, pay no attention. Bad lead. I mean, there's current flowing. Radio's not turned on. No, uh, the on-off switch can't affect this. What? Uh, what happened? I just did this with a different supply and got a. supposed to do here. Um, is this definitely 40 milliamps? AC true RMS 2 amp scale so it should be 2.0 yeah let me turn the supply off turn it back on put it on full here doesn't do anything looks like I've got not even one tube heating here Okay, what foolish mistake have I made? <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta go back, 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 back to this. Yeah, there's no current flow. So uh, what, what did I do here? I, I, you know what? I changed clip leads. I uh, reconnected them, but wow. Okay. No current or so low, I can't even see it on the meter up there. Am I doing something stupid here? One of these leads is bad. How can this... this these are my... These are my excellent leads. How can they be bad? They cannot be bad. Son of a gun. Okay, first the black lead. My DC supply uh, giving up the last bit of its charge. Beautiful. Red one. Grounding terminal, a grounded 
come out. This is certainly a grounded terminal. The other one goes on to any hot filament lead on any tube that's in there. There's a tube here. This is the 6 SA7. I gotta double check everything. And believe this 6 SA7. I was so careful to get this all right right off the bat, or step by step rather. Not right off the bat. 6 SA7. Heaters are 2 and 7, just as I thought. 2 and 7. I get down here and take a look. Pin 2. I'm doing all this again. Pin. Yeah, I had the wrong pin. Wrong pin. So that's what it amounts to. Okay, pull this out of here and put them back in here. Okay, connect to the correct pin. to an amp flowing through that uh, just, just the alligator clip contact so good we just power it up now and see what happens I got to go back through the uh, double checking here do I do I why don't I just hit the power I got I got a meter here to check it with that's good I can do it like this Pairs. So this should go up to around one. Anything other than that, we're in trouble. Here we go. Oh, overload. It's more than two amps. <laughs> more really? More than two amps. Uh, did I underestimate the current flow in these heaters? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I checked this last night. Let's check again. 6SA7 as an example. Heater current. Heater current. Where are you here? Hey. Heater here it is. 300 milliamps. That's what I thought. Really, all of them are a quarter amp. Four tubes, quarter amp. That's one, not two. How do we get over two? <laughs> wow, yeah, I thought within minutes I'd have this radio playing and we'd be having lots of fun with it. Well, how much current is it? Maybe it's 2.1. <laughs> Let's put this on the 20 amp scale. Hit her, Jim. Oh, I see what it was. That's interesting. Okay, so hopefully that all came out on camera. The inrush current was very high. Uh, once you let the heaters heat up, look, we're down to uh, 1.5. Uh, that's quite suitable. So these two should be heating up now. Looking. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tube's heating. Now, now we put a little high voltage on this baby. Okay, I'm going to cut that off. Heater's off. Don't touch these wires, Jim. Okay. Now we got to bring two more wires down for the uh, high voltage DC. here. Oops. Put them on the supply. The red one is positive. So this is where the black lead here is common with the red lead here. The red lead 
Oh, you know what? This isn't the best way. I really want the common. Yeah, let me switch these around here. I want the common to be common. If I'm not careful here, I'm going to put a short in. <laughs> you know what? Even if I am careful, I'll probably put a short in. So now to put on the B+, plus, to put on the B+, plus, that's going to be a connection made in such a way that the current from the supply passes through the field coil. I don't even have the speaker plugged in here. And this speaker wire is not... just yet. Um, so if we look at the capacitor, here's the uh, filter capacitor. We can probably figure out which one of these we need to hook up to to make sure power passes through. Look, it's pretty easy. See this wire? It's going, it's going up into the wire bundle. It's pretty easy. This is coming from the rectifier tube, which is missing, of course. Right to here, and right on. So that's it. That's where we want to feed in. We want to feed in. Well, another way of looking at this is we're trying to act like the power supply in here. So the high voltage DC terminal on the rectifier tube should be the perfect place to inject my fake B plus. So we're going to do that. Go right on there. That's definitely the positive lead. And now this should just go to a ground terminal, of which there are many. There's one right here. So that's going to apply B plus in such a way current flows through the coil here. Plug in the speaker. Maybe I should. First, we'll power this up and see that nothing happens on the uh, power supply. The thinking here is I'm trying to prove that I've connected it to the right spot. Right now, without this plugged in, the right spot should go nowhere. Just charge this capacitor and then meet up with an open wire here. So we should see zero current on the supply. This will heat the tubes up though as soon as they do this. Tubes are heating. This is the B plus level control here. It's at zero right now. Okay, now we're going to raise it up. This is the voltage, that's the current. I jump, I jump there. Voltage going up, current charging a capacitor. Okay, that's exactly what we want to see. Did I just operate this radio? No, because I don't have this plugged in yet. Okay, keep, keep, it, keep it together here, Jim. Keep it together. Plug this in now. Aware that there could potentially be a bit of a charge. I don't think so. In you go. Now the B plus will get through the field coil into the rest of the radio. Put the B plus on the plates. Let's watch, let's keep this on. And just see if something. Hey, hey, how come there's nothing there? How come there's nothing there? Why? Uh, because I've hooked up which one I've hooked up to the heater wire, yeah. Why yeah. No current flow. Uh, okay, is there voltage there? Is there something wrong with my the way I'm doing this meter thing? Voltage is um, uh, bah, 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 6 volts AC, should appear between here and here. Nothing. There's nothing there. Why? Why is there nothing there? What has happened? Again. Did it blow up my power supply up here? 
Okay, so I'm going to read the actual output from the power supply. It's there. Okay, just before my meter took a break. Why is it there? But it's not on the other end of the lead wires. There. There's a little tiny charge there that I bled off as soon as I uh, contacted it with the meter. Um, didn't I? Didn't I like? Didn't I double check all this stuff? Okay, we'll start wiggling wires here to figure out which one it is. So this is reading nothing. This is reading the current supplying the heaters. B plus is zero right now, or close to it. This is this should be. So we've got the current flowing now. Good. It's a good thing I put that meter on there. Now we're ready to advance the B plus. What's going to happen here is the radio is going to come on. This is the this is the theory. <laughs> Let me. Okay. Volume is. We'll put the volume pretty high. Everything else can stay the way it is. Let's, uh, apply the crossed finger technique. By the way, I've noticed a cracked capacitor right there while we've been fooling around cracked molded capacitor. So now I'm going to apply B plus. I'll tell you what the uh, voltage level is as we go up. Starting at you know, there's 10 or 20 volts there. Listening for the speaker to come to life. Wow, is this going to work? Here we go. Going up. 50? 75? 100? I heard a tick. We're trying uh, 10 uh, milliamps. At 100 volts, let's go a little higher. So we're at 150 volts, uh, 20 milliamps. A little higher. 200 volts. I hear it. There you have it. <laughs> Wow, I, I, this was supposed to be like five minutes of effort to get to this point, and what have I been in here for an hour now? Well, let's tune the radio. That's enough. Okay, great. So this this works. I can fire up this radio, and we can start doing component replacements and other tests on it to uh, you know verify its operating conditions, and then go forward from there. That's fantastic. Um, what to do next? So I'm not sure if this is on a AM or one of the short wave bands. Probably figure that out by the sound of it. So AM is going to be at one of the extremes, so we'll go this way. Okay, so that sounds like AM to me already. Yeah. Now where are we on the scale?
that's what it is. I'm getting close to the antenna wire here. That's why it's jumping up and down. So, uh, let's feed a signal into the antenna and see if we can tune it in. And then maybe that's enough for this session. We're all ready to start working on the radio uh, otherwise. So we should, yeah, I'll make some tests to judge the quality of the radio's operation here. At least I'll try and do that. Some leads. Hopefully, my frequency counter will settle down there in a minute or two. This, at this point, we're just going to put it, like they say, loosely coupled. I'm clipping this onto the insulation of this wire, the ground I will put on the ground. Well, we'll just go hunting and see if we can come across this. I can't, I can't read the numbers right now. Now that might have been... No, that has to be the signal. Again. So until this guy settles down, we won't know exactly what frequency we're on. But the radio is receiving. I'll tune the radio. Okay, so it can't be the IF frequency. And also strengthen this. That's all we hear now. Sounds pretty good. Come on, Mr. Tanner. Ah. That's the meter beeping off. And I'm going to quit. Oh, guess what? The counter's working now. <laughs> Switching counters, this thing started working again. Hey, here's a lesson. Hmm. Not sure what that lesson is. Something. Okay, okay that's our am here. Quitting. He's seen the light, I should do the same. Six sixty one. We're at six sixty one. The uh I'm trying to get a look at the uh, capacitor here. Yep, that makes sense. Six sixty one the capacitor's almost all the way open. So uh, it all makes sense.
Good. I think that's enough. I think I've had enough here. So the situation now is we've got the radio able to operate here in the shop, even with the transformer and power supply basically gone. That's going to allow us to start replacing capacitors and seeing what the effect is. Although the radio is working fairly well on the AM band, it may not be so good on short wave and the like. Um, that's a good question right there. Why? Okay. Okay. Let's go look on short wave. Right. First, let's see, the second band is the high short wave or the low end of the high short wave around 6 megahertz or something like that. Okay, so I'll put this up to 6 megahertz. Okay, I'm watching this guy here. 6 megahertz will be found around here. We're at 6.7 megahertz now. Volume up. Okay, we can hear a bit of the hiss. I like to have the volume up enough to hear some atmospheric noise or any kind of noise, really. And we tune the signal generator until we get the magic number. So that's at 5.6 megahertz. Oh, I gotta get the cabinet here to look at it. Actually, there's there's a wonderful piece in the manual on this. I don't need to look at the actual cabinet. But let's do that. So we, I think we're tuned down around here. So on short wave, if, if the radio pointer were here on the short wave band, we should be up around seven, eight, you know, seven and a half to eight. Not where we are at 5.6. That's way off. That's not even 5.6 is on this band. It's not even on the band we're listening to. We think we're listening to A, B, C. I think we're on C. A, B, C. One, two, three. <laughs> so, we'll just keep going up in frequency here. See if there's another spot. Because that could be an image. Coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Great pie. Hmm. Let's put more power out. This is this is uh, similar to a very very strong signal reaching the radio. Of course, we're uh, not connected uh, directly here, so there we are. That's a little more realistic now. Eight point Five point six. So eight point five, five point six. Subtract those two numbers. It's really uh, three, three megahertz. Okay, so that doesn't lead me anywhere. I was hoping to come out to one. One megahertz is roughly double four fifty-five. So, but I think this is where we're tuned. Right up here. So we know the radio is working on the short wave band. Ah, one more band, we might as well check it out. Okay, we'll go to the other band in the middle. The short wave band goes from. Oh, cabinets here. Let me look. Let's see, it goes from 2.3 to 7. Oh, it contains the 6 megahertz band. So both these short wave bands are actually important because the 6 megahertz band is something worth listening to. Um, but we're at the low end, so we're down around the 2.3. Well, where would we be? We'd be around the 2.5 locale. Okay, let's, let's go there. So 
very strong signal. Two. Up, up. Oh. Two point eight is what that says. Look at the radio here. So 2.8 is right around here. So we've picked up, what did we pick up? We picked up, I can't remember now. I think we picked up, like the capacitor has not been moved. So we should read the, this frequency, this frequency, and this frequency, you know, in a, in, a, in a row like this. But instead we're getting here, here, and here. Lots of alignment issues, I think is what that means. I think, I think. But the most important observation here is that all three bands are receiving. So even with all these old capacitors and all that kind of stuff, this radio is actually working. Uh, can we improve it? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Can we detect the improvement as we go along and realize which parts are the ones that are the real dog and which parts are, uh, when you change them out, they don't make much difference at all? Yeah, we can probably get, get through all that. Just try to do this in a fairly coordinated way. We'll try to, to guess which capacitors are the worst actors and get rid of them. Uh, by the way, well, I'm not going to hear any hum this way because the power supply is no longer the radio's power supply. But I guess if my shop supply up here had a bad hum in it, we, we would hear it. We'd hear it right now. But no, no humming. Very good. I got somewhere. Wow, that, that, that took a while. But uh, So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, we'll start the component replacement and basically uh, restoring the radio to uh, hopefully like new or better than new operation. Wow, there's a challenge. Uh, now, by the way, uh, I'm going, I'm considering, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. When I started this video, uh, I got into a couple of rants because actually I was quite upset when I came in here this morning and I had to start the video over and over uh, because I couldn't control myself. So I had some interesting video of me ranting about uh, Canada and the United States. So here's the deal. I'll attach it to the end of this video. Watch it if you dare. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next technical video. See ya. Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to go another step with this radio, which is now missing its great big transformer, which is here, which is a dud. And I have ordered a new one. Here's a picture of it. This is what's coming from Hammond Manufacturing. Um, this is a Canadian manufactured transformer. It's manufactured in Waterloo, which isn't too far from here. Waterloo. But oddly enough, I bought this transformer from a supplier in the United States. Hey, think about that for a minute. This was made 100 miles from here, but I bought it from a supplier in the United States. Good thing there aren't any tariffs between the United States and Canada. Oh, <laughs> oh, you know what, i got to be honest with you. While I'm doing these videos, it's everything I can do to keep my mouth shut about what the United States is doing to Canada. I better stop right now. You can hear the anger in my voice, and it's absolutely real. Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop and rest. And rest. Oh. Okay, okay, I counted to ten. You see, the problem is, I woke up this morning and realized I live in a country which is under economic attack by the United States. And, you know, I can't relax. I cannot relax with what is going on. The United States is ten times the size of Canada. What do you think is going to happen if America decides to destroy Canada? What do you think is going to happen? Okay, i got to count to ten again. Okay, let's see if I can keep calm here now. Um, you see, the problem is, my dad was in the Second World War and he landed on D-Day. That was a fight against 
Nazis. That was a fight against nationalism. My dad fought a war against the effects of nationalism. And if you're American, maybe your dad fought in the same war. But now nationalism is coming from the United States. It's, it's so shocking, so unsettling. I've managed to keep my mouth shut through all these videos for the last six months. But today I woke up and I live in a country which is being threatened with destruction by the United States. No joke. No joke because we know the President of the United States is not based on reality. He lives in a fantasy. And my life is going to be turned upside down by another man's fantasy. Okay, I gotta, I gotta calm down here. I can't believe it. I just can't.